What's going on everybody? Freaky Dude 99 here coming at you with a brand new Titan build this time for Stasis. Now, Stasis has had a rough go recently. It, Behemoth Titan has always been in a strange place and right now it's not at the top of its game, but with this build I've been having so much fun clearing out the enemies, playing all the new content, doing raids, dungeons, doesn't matter what. With this build, you can do it, you can stay alive, you can be an endgame content, and you can decimate bosses to any endgame enemies. So, let's get into it starting with the subclass. Of course, with Behemoth, we're rocking Glacial Quake, and we're doing Rally Barricade, of course, for the lower base cooldown. This is going to factor into our exotic that we're wearing, Hoarfrost Z, which turns our barricade into an ice wall. Using Rally Barricade means it has a lower cooldown, as Towering Barricade has an extra 8 seconds on top of it. Then of course we are using Strafe Lift and then Shiver Strike. For our grenade we're going to be using Glacial Grenade because this spawns Stasis Crystals, which of course when we destroy it, those are going to spawn Stasis Shards thanks to our lovely aspect, Tectonic Harvest. Shattering a Stasis Crystal creates a Stasis Shard and picking up these Stasis Shards grants melee energy to us and our allies. This is going to be wonderful for getting our melee back as well as our second aspect is Diamond Lance. Shattering or defeating targets with stasis abilities or even stasis damage will spawn a diamond lance which then we can pick up and throw or use a melee to slam down. Diamond Lance is wonderful as it can stack on a lot of stasis damage, help freeze targets or bigger enemies that happen to be doing damage to you, as well as just give yourself an extra tool at your disposal to use. And of course this is going to be granting us 3 fragment slots which means we can even do crazier things with the fragment abilities. And to start off with the fragment abilities we're going to be doing Whisper of Shard, shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boost your grenade recharge rate and shattering additional crystals increase the duration of this benefit we are wanting to get our grenade back all the time and with this build you're going to have the ability to throw your grenade pretty often and this just helps us get it back even more plus it gives us a plus 10 to resilience for the next fragment we are going to be using Whisper of Fissures. This is going to increase the damage and size burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. This is just going to make everything explode more. It just makes it more fun. Next up, we are using Whisper of Chains. Whenever we are near a frozen target or a friendly stasis crystal, we will take reduced damage. This is very important for endgame content as getting that resist up is very important for staying alive as even in endgame content like Spire the Watcher, you can get shot down very quickly. And then of course, we're using Whisper of Rhyme. Collecting a stasis shard grants a small amount of overshield. This is wonderful as we're going to be spawning a lot of stasis shards, which means we're going to be getting an overshield and even when you are low health, those stasis shards will then give you health. And it's kind of a good way to jumpstart healing of just throwing down a grenade and smashing it and then you can get pretty much a full heal off a grenade or a barricade. And then for our last one, we're going to be using Whisper Conduction. Nearby Stasis Shards track to our position. This is wonderful. This is awesome because our Stasis Shards are just going to be tracking to us, giving us melee energy. We're going to be getting grenade energy. We're going to be getting barricade energy, as well as we're going to be getting overshield all from our Stasis Shards. So that is the subclass. Now into the weapons. So with this build, I highly recommend that you have a wave frame grenade launcher. There are a couple in the game. My favorite has been explosive personality because you're able to craft it. You're able to get auto loading holster and frenzy. The big one is auto loading holster because being able to shoot that wave frame, shatter a bunch of shards, and then switch over to your main weapon, which I'm using a bow right now, is just wonderful. Now, of course, I do recommend you use a stasis weapon. As champions right now, I recommend using a stasis pulse rifle to break anti-barrier or a stasis bow to break anti-barrier. Of course, if you have overload or any kind of champions, you got to switch up your playstyle depending. But I find I can pretty regularly get through all content using just the grenade launcher, a stasis primary, 
And then of course, I personally love to use Parasite because Parasite adds such a big damage bonus that Behemoth sometimes needs help out. So being able to one-shot champions, being able to one-shot bigger health enemies, being able to one-shot or one-shot into an immune phase some bosses is just such a big help. Now, of course, if you're going into raids, if you're going into some harder content like Spire the Watcher, you'll probably want to switch over to something like Reed's Regret or Cataclysmic or a Taipan, a Linear Fusion Rifle, or one of your rocket launchers. You can use the Palma B, the Stasis Rocket Launcher. It's wonderful. You can get Auto Loading Holster on that as well. But for right now, what I would kind of recommend to use just every day is to use the Parasite Grenade Launcher or Cry Mutiny with the Incandescent. Both are just wonderful. I do recommend Cry Mutiny for more lower level content like Vanguard Ops, Gambit, anything like that that's more easier and not a lot of champions because Parasite really helps add a lot of damage onto your weapons, add a lot of damage onto that boss that you need to just burst down super quickly. So that is going to cover it for the weapons. Next up, we are going to be jumping into the armor. Starting off with the helmet, we are going to be running Void Energy. In our last slot, we're going to be running Protective Light. While charged with light, we're going to gain a significant damage resistance against all combatants when our shield is destroyed. This is lovely as... You're going to be going down health a lot, especially in endgame content, especially in raids. Getting that bump in resistance helps so much. You'll, you'll really notice it when it starts to take effect and you start to get low down. Of course, we're using Harmonic Siphon. So whenever we kill enemies with stasis weapons, we're going to spawn an orb of power. Because we're void energy, we're also rocking dynamo. So reduces our super cooldown when using class ability near targets. We're going to be using our class ability pretty much all the time around targets. So that helps us get our super back quite quickly. And then of course, a resilience mod as we are wanting to focus resilience, discipline, and strength in this build for the gauntlets we are running stasis energy so we can take advantage of elemental shards where it makes it so stasis shards count as stasis elemental wells this means so any stasis shards that we spawn through grenades killing enemies or our barricade all become stasis wells and fuel this build as it is a two energy which makes it a lot easier and opens up the champion mods I am personally using Piercing Bowstring as it is effective against the anti-barrier champions. And then as well as I'm using Grenade Kickstart as getting your grenade back as fast as possible is really important with this build. And then I'm using a Strength Mod to get that strength bumped up. For the exotic of this build, what makes this build really shine is Hoarfrost Z. This makes it so whenever we pop our barricade, we instead create a wall of stasis crystals that slow nearby targets, will freeze them if they are inside, as well as standing near the barricade gives us everything that we would normally get. A reload speed, stability, range, as well as destroying the barricade spawn stasis crystals as well as they can shatter. This just makes it amazing because you can run into a group of enemies, pop your barricade, shatter it with your wave frame, and then watch everything just die. All those stasis shards will pop up. You're going to destroy a bunch of stasis crystals, so your grenade energy is going to come back quicker, as well as all those stasis shards are going to be contributing into Well of Restoration. Picking up a stasis elemental well grants you additional energy for the ability that has the lowest energy. Now with this build, you'll notice that I don't use my melee a lot as because taking advantage of Well of Restoration, we want to get our grenade and our class ability back a lot faster. So by not using our melee, it then increases the chance that our grenade and our barricade will go up faster and no stasis elemental wells or shards are getting wasted on our melee. I usually save my melee for when I'm dealing with unstoppable champions, I need to get back on the stage, or I'm just quickly looking to toss an enemy out of the stage. Now, of course, we're going to be using Energy Diffusion Substrate. You can kind of use whatever you want, uh, melee damage resistance, sniper damage, concussive dampener, everything's really good. Even ammo reserves are very nice to have. This is kind of up to you. Of course, I recommend just energy diffusion because you can go into everything and have a good amount of damage resist against every elemental type. 
Running into the leg armor, we are going to be using solar energy and we are going to be using elemental charge. This just makes it so whenever we pick up a stasis shard, which is now also counts as stasis wells, we are going to be getting a charged with light, which is going to factor into our protective light. Protective light is going to give us resist. We just need elemental charge to make sure we can become charged with light. Of course, we're using recuperation and innervation. So whenever we pick up an orb of power, we get grenade cooldown uh, reduced as well as we get some health and then a discipline mod. And then finally, for the class item, we're going to be rocking solar energy so we can take advantage of firepower or gain a portion of your grenade energy whenever you use your grenade, consuming one stack of charge of light. We're going to be using this because it's not actually going to interfere with protective light that much, as you'll see. Because we're picking up stasis wells and stasis shards count as stasis wells, we are just making so many wells and becoming charged with light nearly permanently that having firepower and protective light does not matter because as soon as protective light goes down you're most likely going to be picking up a shard and get charged with light again to use firepower it'll go down you'll grab more shards it's just a repeating loop of endless destruction so you'll have no worries on that front and then of course for our two items we are using low entropy superconductor and lord kelvin's basilisk this is to make it so our stasis grenades cause disruption on overload champions and our stasis melee is strong against unstoppable champions. This frees up our weapon slots so much because being able to deal with both overload and unstoppable champions with just our abilities means we can pretty much use any weapon we want as long as we're taking care of barrier champions we're going to be set so we have nothing to worry about there. And then of course we're using a strength mod and that pretty much covers this build so i'm going to show you some gameplay of the seraph station now this is me doing it and as you can see we have so much survivability we're barely going down anytime our health drops that resist is kicking in as well as we are getting our grenade back our barricade back our melee back our weapons are doing tons of damage it is just full on decimation and I cannot tell you how much fun it is to plant your grenade, plant your barricade, have a bunch of enemies crowded up and then just watch them shatter. And then as well as if you're doing lower level content, try using Cry Mutiny because as much as Parasite decimates anything with a health bar, Cry Mutiny is so much fun to plant your grenades, make a stasis minefield and then shoot Cry Mutiny and watch Incandescent blow up and just fireworks pretty much go off in the battlefield. This is a wonderful build to finish out the dawning with and heading out if you want to use stasis at all. So thank you so much everybody for watching. Thank you so much for the support you've been showing my videos, all you new subscribers. I'm loving that you're here and I'm so happy that you're enjoying the videos. So stay tuned for more and we'll see you around. Peace out, everybody.